team, you know, the, the mixture of them, you guys give me just, I can't explain. You know, I was able to rest my mind today listening and then tonight too, you know, it's, it's uh, the thing as a Christian is to constantly be prioritizing our life and where, where we should be at. And the things, you know, the Bible talks a lot about the, where our mindsets should be. And so there, there's a couple of things in there. I, what was, wouldn't, what was the deal, the love one? I can't, I can't remember because I was kind of in awe. The, probably the whole thing was the love one. Um, <laughs> Tonight, I'm motivated by three scenarios in my life. Um, one is we as a unit, and this is personal to me because I'm, I'm a man that has suffered from a foreclosure. I've had cars repossessed. I've been fired from jobs. So to see the follow through of something like paying the debt off, of where I worship, maybe it's not big to anybody else, but it's huge to me for a multitude of reasons. One is, I'm excited to say that my little, little, tiny contribution and my wife and my children, our names in this mix, and just for my, say, my grandchildren's sake, Amen. to know, hey, you know, my, my granddad, he, man, he just kind of hung tough. Yeah. And so... Um, we're going to talk about the word mercy tonight. We're going to kind of glaze over it. Uh, the, the book of Psalms mentions the word mercy over 120 times. We talked about mercy in Sunday school um, this morning, but the, the three scenarios that have really made me think about mercy recently is the paying off of our building, my neighbors that live next door to me, and they're fellow Christians, so I, I don't think they'll have any issue with me. I won't mention them by name, but I will be making some reference. And then my up-the-street neighbor. And so as I discuss this, let me tell you how it all correlates. My up-the-street neighbor, we now have homeless people residing in our backfield. Now I'm going to tell you from Tom's experience, and only Tom's experience, I have never had a homeless, penniless person steal anything from me. I've never had them go over and touch my truck, my wallet, my car keys. Nothing even close to the big stigma that gets put on them. I really hate to tell everyone this, but the thieves of this world look like me. That's what they look like. So my, my one neighbor, I pray for him. I, I have to have mercy with him. You know, he's an older man, and so I, he tests my mercy tank all the time and to go back to some of our reference to worship tonight all of us should be overflowing with mercy all of us because of what's been demonstrated for us and given to us my neighbors um, to the side of me part of part of the word mercy is compassion and so I, I think that there's a multitude of times in my own life that if I were to exercise more compassion I would be able to be more merciful. And so, um, and then uh, in reference to the church, something that I, I took it as, I took it as a challenge however many years ago it happened to be, but then this is Tom's understanding. Nobody has to side with me, agree with me or anything else. It doesn't have to go further than what I'm about to state, just a statement. I remember a day where it seemed to me like the big money people of my church decided it, just my personal opinion, that they decided it's going to be our way or we're leaving. That's how I took it. Nobody else has to agree with me. It's, it's not even part of the point. I myself, that, that particular day, and I didn't ask his permission, but I felt like I saw a lot of mercy from my pastor. And how he conducted himself but I took that on myself as I was not mad at anybody I wasn't thinking okay I'm gonna show you I thought you know Lord I have spoken out of turn a multitude of times in my life over money you know I don't know what the deal is but I, I have faith that this will all work out so now that we are embarking on we're done we're pretty much done with our journey it would be very easy for all of us rep of the remnant to come back and say we tried to tell you we tried to tell you 
But now it's even more important that we exercise more mercy than even the original meeting when everything went haywire. And so tonight we're gonna talk just a little bit about mercy. Um, I'm gonna give you the definition of mercy and then one, one, of the, one of the scriptures tonight is gonna talk about the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God is twofold in my humble opinion. One is we cannot possibly have the knowledge of God if you do not study the word on a regular basis. And yes, I, I do think it's important that it's we have the ability to reference an address somewhere in the Bible to make reference to, to what that may be. But in order to have a true knowledge of God, we have to practice it too. So we can sit here and discuss mercy all night long. But if we truly have the knowledge of God, we practice those things that we have learned and we make reference to in his word. So the definition of mercy is compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is within one's power to punish or harm. So ultimately speaking, Jesus Christ is the ultimate act and picture of mercy because, I mean, let's let's face it, uh, I think it's Romans that says for all fall short of the glory of God. There's a uh, spot in Ephesians. Um, I broke down compassion too. Compassion is sympathetic pity and concern for the sufferings or misfortunes of others. So, um, and, and thinking about, say, my neighbor's, situation right now there's a lot of emotions going on because there are things added from the outside mixing in causing people to not be of a, a sober mind that's that's the first thing so for me that one particular person in the mix I can have compassion and mercy on that person because I've been there I know what it's like to be a drugged out mess and there's a lot of people that might say man Tom that was your choice I know that was my choice. Man, Tom, you brought it all upon yourself. I know I brought it all upon myself. But the bottom line is, this person that I'm speaking of, for me to stand and condemn him versus giving him a full armory of mercy, he's going to respond to me being compassionate and merciful. He is not going to respond to me being condemned. And so my knowledge of the Lord is no matter what I have done, when I am in a state of repentance on my face, I receive his mercy. So um, let's go to Hosea 6.6. 6. For I desire mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offering. Capture whatever word in that scripture you want to. The one that stands out to me is the word desire. Now, I personally right now, and you might not correlate to this, but so I can put it on terms that my feeble mind can understand. I really desire a new work truck with good air conditioning right now. I mean, I really, I am on the road a thousand miles a week. So whatever it takes for you to comprehend deeply that word desire, just meditate on it for a second. For I desire mercy and not sacrifice. So. That, that brings me to the second part of that. I had to really think about the word sacrifice for a minute. And the different things in my life that, you know, I used to consider sacrifice. You know, really as a father going out and working every day is not what I would consider to be a sacrifice. I would consider that to be my job. And in studying the knowledge of God, even more so, I would classify myself and my humble opinion on how I look at the word sacrifice, I believe there's been one sacrifice. And there was one sacrifice for all, said and done. Then the last part of this is, um, my eyes are bad. And the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. So what is the word actually telling us 
about the knowledge of God. So what that tells me is I, I can go through all the pseudo Christianity type things like I come to church on Sunday, I pay my correct tithe, whatever mathematical equation that would be. Um, I go through all the status quo things, but am I being authentic? And can I have authentic mercy and desire mercy if all I do is superficial sacrifice, just following the rules? Um, you know, do I follow the rules? That Sunday, I think it was a Sunday where we had this lavish meeting, business meeting. You know, I guess maybe on the outside we were following the rules. But how many of us in that room that day were practicing what God says right here and the knowledge of God more than burnt offering? How many of us saw past the status quo and we were being merciful to not only the people on this side, but merciful, you know, we were getting ready to sling rocks. I could feel it. It was, it, it got pretty heated. Um, but I want you to focus on and the knowledge of God. I personally cannot have the knowledge of God if I don't try to put into practice the things that I learn from his word. So when it comes to mercy, again, I want to encourage you. Psalms mentions the word mercy 120 times. Now, who's the main character in Psalms? David. David. So um, let's go to David. Matthew 23, 23. Matthew 23, 23. By the way, Pastor Rob, that was a great sermon today. And I'm going to advocate. Um, and my new word in life and in business is resonate. I like to pray and meditate on things, and hopefully it resonates. Um, this is going to be on the record. I'm going to get rid of that clock. Somebody's going to turn their back on me, and I'm going to resort to my old ways for a brief second. I'm going to get rid of that clock on the stage. I'm just letting it be known. No, I'm going to brutally destroy it. I'll just leave it at that. It says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of men... And I cannot pronounce that word anise. Anis. 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 And cumin. And have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. Now, in this context, the, the Pharisees basically are all about any, it would kind of like them going through our house and say they find mine and Daniel's piggy bank and they say well you know Tom you tithed on your bank account but we got you you know the piggy bank you owe us another three and a half bucks man mm -hmm. you, you know you're not yeah and in, and in different times in our church we've been we I, I pastor Rob calls them the joy suckers I call them the nickel and dimers but the weightier matter at that particular time was us pulling together as a group and having faith, it had nothing to do with the mortgage on this building. That that was way here and way up here. The weightier matter of that was um, faith, which uh, I believe faith, it says justice and mercy and faith, which they all are related. I don't think you can have one without the, the other in the recipe of the knowledge of God. If you really believe you have the knowledge of God, all three of those are present for me. Um, but I thought, I thought about that, the, the nickel and diming part of things in my own life. You know, I'm, I guess you could say I'm proud to be an employer that I round up to the next hundred. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. I'm not one of those guys that goes, well, you know, Rogelio, it's 14 minutes and, you know, uh, you owe me another 46 minutes to make this. Um, and so that falls into the compassion part of this and i'm going to repeat myself a little bit here because i honestly still am toying and playing with the comprehension of compassion the definition one of the definitions in mercy is also forgiveness 
but that compassion is sympathetic petty, pity and concern for the sufferings or misfortunes of others. Have any of us really thought about the sufferings of others? You know, my whole point in that business meeting was there was a tremendous, there were some people in our church that were sacrificing a great deal financially to try and make all of this work. And instead of us showing mercy and having some faith, we chose to point out all of the things that on paper would not, mercy doesn't make sense on paper either. On a spreadsheet, on, on, the, on, the, on the spreadsheet of life, mercy makes no sense at all. Why on earth would you have compassion and forgiveness than someone that is lesser than you? Like say, the homeless people out behind my house, right? Those guys don't go to work 90 hours a week. They don't know what it's like to have this taken and that taken and have to, right? That all sounds perfectly legitimate, but does not fit into the recipe of mercy with God whatsoever. Um, let's go to Matthew 9.13. We're going to kind of hang out in the same book so we're not doing the thumb exercise. Matthew 9.13. Now, I'm, I'm going to read up just a little bit. Um, now it happened as Jesus sat at the table in the house that, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard this, heard that, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, but those who are sick, but go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. So this thing called mercy is something that all of us absolutely have to practice and work at every day. It cannot be a Sunday morning, our favorite people deal. Like, for example, my mother-in-law can do no wrong in my eyes. Absolutely no wrong whatsoever. She's in the back, so she's not really that embarrassed. But where I'm going with this is in order to have a true knowledge of God is to really work at our mercy tank with those that we feel aren't doing it quite the right way. And again here, you see the word desire. You know, so God has a great, great longing for us to practice mercy. And so when I hear um, things like go and learn, that's not something I'm just going to go pick up at Walmart, get a CD, practice a little bit, and, and I know my thing. This is something I'm going to have to physically and mentally work at. I'm going to have to work at this. And so, you know, um, make reference again to my next door neighbors. It was priceless when my neighbor says, Tom, you can't possibly understand what I'm going through. <laughs> really? <laughs> so I, I let it, I let it ease for a minute. Um, and this is, this is where, and it is the godly compassion in me. It is a godly brood part of my personality before that I don't believe existed pre accepting the Lord as my Lord and Savior. Amen. I said to this person, I have not walked in your shoes specifically, but I do know what it's like to be desperate, and I do know what it's like to feel alone. And as I, I, I felt God's mercy <laughs> over me and my own testimony, which immediately, you know, this, this particular individual is really borderline crossing some legal boundaries. And so I, I had to, you know, the man side in me really had to be overcome by the Christian side of me. And so, you know, as our conversation went, uh, you know, it's the atypical thing again and again and again. You, you couldn't possibly know what I'm going through. I said to so-and-so, but God does know. 
And so I'm standing here, I'm willing to listen. You can throw whatever things you want to throw at me. I was justified in calling the police. Absolutely 100% by the world's ordination, I could easily have called the police and easily been in the right. But I believe that's what God's talking about and his word about mercy is those times in our life when we are dead set in the right and we are justified by what this world says we are justified by for us to set a better example and pull back and be merciful. And so really, um, this particular day with my neighbor, it settled down <laughs> quite a bit. You know, it went from 100 miles an hour to about 25 miles an hour. And I did... You know, God allowed me to remember in my 44-year-old mind some scripture that I had studied that pertained. But I started off only because of my knowledge of the word and things that have been practiced with me. Because I told this certain individual, too, before you say one more time that I don't possibly understand, you know... I had a wife that stuck behind me for two years that easily by the world standard could have said, you know, you're not uh, performing up to the job standards that I hired you for. Um, so, you know, in light of that, uh, I'm going to seek a divorce, which there's nobody even in my church body. And that's not I'm not I'm not pounding anybody, but there's nobody in the scenario that would have faulted my wife for giving up. There's nobody. And so, you know, as I pointed this out to the person, I said, hey, your family is choosing to stick behind you no matter what. So we're the same. We're the same. The names are different, but we're the same. Um, so I, I, I want that to resonate in your, in your head, in your heart, in your brain, every part of you tonight. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. He says mercy first. It doesn't mean that we sh shouldn't be sacrificial, but it says in his order, he desires mercy first. Um, let's go to Matthew 12, 7. Okay, now this, I'm, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to read up a little bit. Um, I, for me, this describes me and my posse and the way the multitude of the businessmen that I work around. Um, and I'll explain it after, after I read it. Um, I'm going to start in the beginning of 12. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath and his disciples were hungry and began to pluck heads of grain to eat. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. But he said to them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry? He and those who were with him. Now he entered the house of God and ate the showbread, excuse me, which was not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him, but only for the priests. So keep that in your mind. It, it wasn't lawful for anybody else to eat it, but it was okay for the priests to eat it. Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? Yet I say to you that in this place there is one greater than the temple. But if you, bless you, but if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless for the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. You know, the first thing that comes to mind here is, and this should remind you of a scenario that we're surrounded by. Are the priests not some of the more wealthier individuals of this particular area and time? Are they not really the guys that their wallets are fat? They're of great influence? So wouldn't you think that maybe a godly guy would have said, Well, you know, I, you're kind of doing something you're not supposed to be doing on the Sabbath. You know, I got a refrigerator full of food. You, you want to cruise in and maybe I'd give you a couple bologna sandwiches or something? <laughs> you know, we we become guilty of that same thing. You know, before my neighbor, my wonderful neighbor, goes out to the back to harass some homeless people, maybe try to get put his head around a little bit more on, you know, what kind of resources you have? You know, I don't know, I... Maybe take bologna's good. Bologna and wheat bread is good. 
Um, but where he goes at the end of this is, um, you. but if you had known what this means, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, I would say the Pharisees got caught up on protocol, right? This is status quo. These are the rules. But the bottom line is these guys were hungry, right? You know, when I look back and I, I, do, I do parallel this with our business meeting on that Sunday, was the bottom line not for us to turn on one another, but for us to pull together, pull back just a little bit, and everybody forget about what your opinion is, but for us to seek the kingdom of God first. And the kingdom of God first is about mercy, right? Because that's how we all got here. So if we seek him first, we have the knowledge of God, that's how we start our operation first. And so, I don't know why I found this scripture comical, but this describes a multitude of us. You know, we really get caught up in the sequence of events, how things should go, protocol, law, and all these different things. We are Christians first. I was telling Wolfgang about um, being a California contractor right now, um, they're starting to weigh heavy on us about being legitimate. And so those of us that have had illegal employees paying them under the table <laughs> for however many, amount of time, uh, they're strongly frowning upon this now. And they're, they have put things in place that are they see whether we're legitimate or not. Last Saturday at Grace Brethren Church, a uh, fellow Bible-believing church, um, this middle-aged lady in a white Ford Taurus with smoked windows and a government plate pulls up. She gets out, she's very well-spoken, and she says, I notice there's some work going on around here. Um, you know what? What's, what's the deal? And so, uh, short, short version is she ran my numbers and all my numbers are legitimate and they have everything's in place that, the, that it's the way it's supposed to be. But back in March, I had a fellow Christian sister that extended a great deal of mercy to me. She, uh, who is my insurance broker, um, she basically wrote the initial check for my worker's compensation until my big check came in two days later. Cindy Eklund, I don't think she'd have a problem with me mentioning her name just, just because. Um, but following the protocol set of rules, <laughs> And if she wanted to act pharisaical, she easily could have said, "Hey, you're not you're not taking care of your part of the bargain, Tom. You're not you don't you don't fit all the elements. Forget about it." And so, you know, as we come to the close of paying for this building, we're going to have what do we call our three day thing? A harvest festival? Yeah, harvest festival. I think one of the themes should be mercy in ten seconds or less. I think especially in light of the great blessing that God's given us and this building being paid for, that, that that's a result of obviously his will, but also a, a great deal of mercy because we stuck together. You know, really it could have been with the remnant that was here, we could have perpetuated. But I think we chose, I think we chose the mercy wild card. You know, we, we in the game of life, they want to call it poker. We call it mercy. We call it faith. Um, now let's go to James 5.11 I really like in the word of God when I hear the word endure you know it's in, in the times that the last couple of weeks of my life have been extremely physically challenging. So when I read this word endure, it really means something to me personally. And I was very sincere during the offering today when, man, I don't, I don't know how many of you ever sit back, but to sit at home, you know, and this is home. And your home church with people that love you, you love those people, instead of your mind going a million miles an hour, it's a good feeling to me. It's nice yeah. to just, you know, and then Pastor Rob was on one, you know, he's on one of those sermons that, you know, it's easy, it's easy to nod on Sunday. If there's nobody else in here that wants to confess that on Sunday morning, 
temperature, you know, that's one thing about turning the air conditioner on. I wish they wouldn't because it's <laughs> way too comfortable in here. It's really easy to, even when the worst of teams really banging drums and guitars to mm -hmm. catch yourself and Pastor Rob was on one of those ones where I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, my, my eyes were wide open today. Um, felt good to be here. Uh, James chapter 5, verse 11. Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. We have heard of the perseverance of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. And so I dedicate this scripture to all of us that we endured. You know, one of the things about a businessman, which I'm sure Wolfgang can testify to and Ben, anybody, well, ask everybody in the workforce. You know, Christy and Kurt, all of us in the workforce. This last eight years, we've had to endure. And what's really interesting is the part, the part of my life that I increased is not the part of my life I would have thought eight years ago that I would increase. Eight years ago, you know, I tithed last. So, you know, what, whatever I saw left, you know, after my bills are paid, I decided, well, that must be right, Lord, right? That, that's not enduring. And that's not faith for me. And so anybody else, you can call it what you will. I would not want to offend anybody, but that's not what I would call that. So through the, the studying of the word and the growth over the last eight years, my formula is a lot different now. I'll just leave it at that. But I, I'm happy to say that because of a great deal of mercy in my own life, I've been able to endure. And all of us have been able to endure together. And so I want to I want to break mercy down again for you. Pick somebody and a situation right now in your life that you seem like you just cannot put up with one more second of either person or situation. That is the person by the knowledge of God that we're supposed to deal with. Whatever it may be. And I have it in my own life. Whether it's blood, I have some biological uh, scenarios, you know, people that I'm related to, um, people at work. Um, I know I've shared with you, you know, in business this year, it's really kind of interesting. Another enduring, merciful thing for me is all of, all, 100% of all the men involved and how can I say less than desirable business situations have all been terminated. And it was noted by the ownership of Carpet One, and so this isn't gossip, this is straight out of their mouth. The one brother said, man, Tom, you seem to be the last man standing. You know, you guys all <laughs> walked in together in 2008, you're the last man standing. I said, it's all about faith. Be integrious, and it's all about faith. And so um, I encourage you tonight to think about the person and the thing, whatever it may be, whether it's, you know, husband, wife, mom and dad, brother, sister, church member, uh, really would pray for you if it's a church member. Man, start right now with the knowledge of God and practicing mercy. We're in, a, we're in the next level. You know, it should be that all of us have matured and grown tremendously from the last five years in dedication and, and enduring. And so now we're about to embark on a different level. And so we're going to have to take all of those things and wisdom that we've learned. And I don't know, it might be, it might go the other way for us. Now that we don't have this big issue to worry about, hopefully we all have mercy and compassion on one another and don't create this needless big issue. Man. And so tonight I want to encourage you, practice compassion. Like those of us that are parents and husbands and wives, a good place to practice compassion is with our children and with our spouse, whether you have children or don't have children. But a very good place is to start within our home and then with one another. What, what strikes me odd as a Christian, and it really should all bother you the same way it bothers me, we treat each other worse than people that don't confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That is a horrible thing to think. But I see it around me. I've seen... All sort of different things, don't, and I, I don't want to be negative and reiterate any of those things, but, man, 
could we try a little bit of mercy with one another? I mean, from our children running in hallways to, okay, maybe a platinum person doesn't hear so well. Say it louder then. Uh, whatever the case may be, but we really should be working on one another with, with our mercy. And then uh, last but not least, you know, I, I think of those homeless guys out in the backfield. Let me assure all of you, you are one decision away from being homeless. One. Is the contractor? I'm one phone call away, trust me. One phone call away from, hey, uh, mom, you know that extra bedroom you got back there? Uh, you know, so, you know, this, this mercy thing, the knowledge of God, he has already given us the greatest example of mercy. And it's time that we focus on an hour by hour, day by day, every second of our life on showing mercy. So that's, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we get a closing <laughs>